I went in on my own accord to the hospital, trying to be brave. My nervous heart rate was picked up on the fetal strip, stat ultrasound. The resident said she was unable to find the heartbeat. But as an ICU nurse, I saw her hand move instinctively away every time she found the heart. The tech came in and found the heart, no longer beating. I'm sorry, she said. She and the resident disappeared behind the curtain. Only four months later, I became pregnant with our daughter. Everyone was looking at me like I should be happy. I was pregnant again, but I was grieving. I was struggling with holding grief and joy at the same time. I don't know how to. I felt like I had failed Noah as a mother, that somehow it was my fault. As someone who every day saved lives in the ICU, how could I have failed my own child and felt that I was failing my current child, finding it hard to connect? A few years went by. I came into work after bundling my three children off to school. At shift change, I learned that my 87-year-old patient, George, had been struggling to live over the past three nights. I walked into the room to see his family crowded around the bed, sitting on the edge of their chairs, tired lines etched deeply on their face as George struggled to breathe. Hi, George. I love your name. When one of the girls in my family brought a new boyfriend home, my dad would always call them George. I saw the muscles change on his face as he smiled, and the family relaxed into a low giggle. How are you doing? I hear your past couple of nights have been difficult. He looked me in the eye and he said, it's my time to go. George, are you ready to die? He smiled. Oh yes, I've got people to see. His family leaned in with trepidation and his daughter said, Dad, Are you sure? As she replaced the oxygen tube that he had pulled away. He nodded yes. I looked up to see my manager walk by the door with her dog. Intuitively, I pulled them into the room. I didn't know dogs were central in George's life. His exhausted face transformed into glee, and so did his family. In that moment, the hospital room became a sacred space. Four months later, We were once again on our way to the hospital. The 37-week-old baby girl inside me no longer moving. The same OB from nine years earlier walked into the room to perform the ultrasound. There was no heartbeat. After sharing her condolences, she slipped out of the room, but then returned to share how she had remembered our son Noah from nine years ago. She sat and talked with us, discussing death, and how differently women cope with it around the world. We decided to go home and tell our children. Two days later, our daughter Ambrance was birthed. Jay and I danced in the delivery room, celebrating her life. I didn't use any pain medications in the delivery. I wanted to be fully present in her birth. The most amazing birth. My body delivered her naturally slipped out without intervention in a room full of love and sacred comforting silence. Two days later, I was sitting at my sister's house breastfeeding her newborn baby while she recovered from a complication in the hospital. I felt joy and I felt grief. I was able to hold them both.